Hello everyone, welcome to A plus PI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very very radical equation with complex numbers. We have square root of z plus the square root of negative z or the opposite of z equals 3 minus i and we're going to be solving for z values. There, there are some issues with these types of problems. I know some people always complain about, hey, this is not the standard notation. What, does, uh, what do you mean by square root of a number? There are multiple values, so on and so forth. I'll try to address those issues, giving you some examples. And by the way, we've done a similar problem before, so let's dive into it. Okay, so I'll be presenting two methods. And if you know of a third method, you're going to let me know, right, in the comment section. Make sure to do so. So let's start with the first method. For my first method, I will do what is usually the obvious straightforward method, which is squaring both sides, because we have a radical equation. And the second reason for that is why not, right? Is that a good reason? So we have radicals, obviously you're going to do that, right? And when you square both sides, something interesting happens, like you have a plus b quantity squared, right? So we're going to square the first expression, square the second one, I usually do it kind of like a different way. I do write a squared, b squared, and then 2ab. It's better that way for many reasons. Anyways, plus the 2ab is going to give us 2 times the radical negative z squared. Such a weird product, right? And the right-hand side is 9 plus i squared minus 6i. Again, a squared, b squared, and then 2ab. Of course, that's a minus. i squared is negative 1. You should know that, right? If you can forget everything about complex numbers, but don't forget this. That's very important. 9 minus 1 is 8, so that's 8 minus 6i. These two cancel out nicely. We end up with something like this. 2 times the square root of negative z squared equals 8 minus 6i. I could simplify this, but I'm not going to do it because that's saved for another method. All right, so here's what I'm going to do, though. I will divide both sides by 2 because we can simplify this. Let's do it. And then we're going to square both sides one more time. Why? because we're dealing with a radical. That's what I meant by a very radical equation, because we had to do this twice. By the way, in uh, to my previous video, there was uh, a response, or I should say a comment, about someone who has another, you know, who has a YouTube channel. I think he's a professor at some college or something. I don't know. I'll try to find that link for you and share with you. But um, he said that he was going to come up with a formula, and he did. I actually saw the video. It's really fun. And anyways, that's just a side story. So when we square both sides, we're going to end up with the just negative z squared. The radical is going to disappear. And again, we're going to go through this a squared b squared thingy. 16 plus 9i squared minus 24i. Again, i squared is equal to negative 1. I could directly write negative 1, but I didn't want to do it for some reason. This gives us negative z squared equals 16 minus 9, which is 7 minus 24i. That number should be, uh, look, that should look familiar to you. And by the way, a complex number is made up of two numbers. Remember that, right? Because it's two dimensional, like a vector. So 7 and 24 are special numbers. You know why? Because 7, 24, 25. Think about it and you'll hopefully find it. Okay, great. And if you don't, please let us know in the comment section. I'm going to have to negate both sides, obviously, because I want to get to z, so I want to get to z squared first. And now what am I going to do with this, right? Well, we're going to go ahead and find z from here. So I have to square root it. Really? You just squared everything and then you, you're going to square root it? Well, you don't really need to. I mean, you could replace z with a plus bi and then go through the process. What happens if you square z? You're going to get a squared minus b squared plus 2abi. Set it equal to negative 7 plus 24i. And then this is going to be negative 7. This is going to be 24, which means AB is 12. A squared minus B squared is negative 7. Find two numbers whose product is 12. And among those pairs, find the one whose difference of squares is equal to negative 7 or square both sides and make up a quadratic. So many ways to go, right? I'm not going to get into those, but you can definitely take it from here and find A and B. Or we can look at it a little differently which is something that I'm going to use again, but I think this is a good time to reveal it. So here's the alternative. We had the square root of negative z squared, right? And we squared both sides. But if we didn't, if we didn't, we would get the following. 
This could be written as the square root of negative 1 times z squared. And then separate it. Be careful because you can't do this with negative numbers, but let's just pretend we can. Well, if you look at the multi-valued nature of this number, because negative 1 has two square roots. Remember that? What are they? Wait a minute. Didn't we just talk about it? i squared is negative 1. So i is one of the square roots of negative 1. What is the other one? The opposite of i. Come on. Uh, negative i. Because if you square negative i, you get i squared, which is negative 1 one more time, obviously. So complex square roots come in opposite pairs. If i is a solution to this, negative i is another one. Make sense? We could express that as plus minus i. And of course, just take this as z because plus minus is already taken care of. Makes sense? So from here we get the following. Plus minus i z is equal to what? Is <laughs> It's equal to the right hand side, right? But where, where does that come from? Well, if you just go ahead and actually look at the original problem, 8 minus 6i divided by 2, that gave us 4 minus 3i. There you go. So this is equal to 4 minus 3i. And then, of course, we're going to split it up into two cases. If iz is equal to 4 minus 3i, multiply both sides by negative i. Don't divide by i. Now, some people, including black pen, red pen, does it. That's perfectly fine. But I don't. I multiply by negative i instead. Uh, no big deal. But z becomes negative 3 minus 4i. And if iz is equal to the, uh, or negative iz is equal to 4 minus 3i, it's just going to be the opposite. So z will be 3 plus 4i. So there seems to be two solutions. Do you think both of them are going to work? Because we're going to talk about some issues. But that's after the second method. Okay? So stick around and wait for the fun stuff. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do for my second method. We have this equation. And we're going to do the following. Notice that how we turned negative z squared into plus minus i root z. I, I z, I'm sorry, because the square root of z squared, we can do the same thing here. We can kind of write this as i times the square root of z, but of course with a plus minus sign because negative 1 has two square roots. Make sense? Equals 3 minus i. This is probably um, a method that is followed by some people, but not everyone. That's perfectly fine. What am I going to do with this? Obviously, if you're doing algebra, you should know factoring, right? We'll do factoring. And then we get something like this, and we have to split it up again. Let's look at one of them, because the other one is just going to be the opposite, or the conjugate maybe, who knows, we'll see. Let's go with the plus sign first. So I'm going to multiply by the conjugate, oops, I don't want to delete my yellow, multiply by 1 minus i, the numerator is just going to be 3 minus 3i minus i plus i squared, which is negative 1, and the bottom is going to be 2. This is negative 1, so that's going to give me 2 minus 4i divided by 2, and that is square root of z, remember, right? And square root of z from here is going to be 1 minus 2i. Awesome. And of course, if this is 1 minus 2i, then z will be its square, because now you can square both sides easily, and no worries, because a number squared has a single value. It's not like the square root. That's a di little different, right? If you square this number, you're going to get negative 3 minus 4i, but notice, if z is a solution, then negative z is also a solution because if you look at the problem, the original one, there is some symmetry. You can replace z with negative z, it's still going to be true. Make sense? Okay, so we got two solutions. Did we get the same solutions? So from here, we're basically saying that, okay, 3 plus 4i is also a solution, and that's what we got with the first method. Here's the problem with this. Now, when you, if you had this equation, like this was my first version, then I realized, okay, this is not going to work well. And then what happens is when you uh, square both sides here, you get a solution and they follow the same steps. The z values that you get are not going to satisfy this equation. And why is that a problem? Because the square root of z and the negative z are not going to be taking the same value. In other words, if you take the principal value for z, you have to stick to it and use the same principal value for the opposite, so that you are consistent, all right? And this brings us to the solutions from Wolfram Alpha and to the end of this video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.